What up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pence here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any Run Your Race content. What up, everybody? It's your boy Theo Pizza here with another episode of Running Race with my boy AJ Richardson, who is not here today. But we are back with my guy, Justin Jackson. Justin, thank you again for coming on, brother. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, me and Justin are matching today. And we both have the first pizza, mer first piece of merchandise from my new brand, Proud Dad Brand. Uh, this is something that I have been talking about for a minute um, that I am very passionate about being a father. And I know Justin is also uh, being a dad. is not something that I don't take for granted and in no way, shape, form or fashion. I'm not trying to take anything from mothers, but uh, something that I'm very passionate about is dad's been God's been proud of being a dad and being present and uh, just understanding the value we have to our children and to our wives and our fiancés and girlfriends of being present and uh, being the best father we can, the best dad we can. And it's something that um, I'm really passionate about and I want everybody to understand and be proud of. So that's why I started Proud Dad Brand. This is the first piece of merch that's coming out and uh, looking forward to a lot more. Respect. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. But also, prospects. We appreciate you. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me and Run Your Race, and it's been awesome, and we're only getting bigger and better. So thank you guys for supporting us. But, Justin, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. I'm asking you a tough question early. Justin, who's the toughest? Who has? Who is the most skilled player that you have played with in your career? Most skilled player, huh? Mm -hmm. Um, wow. Let's go down the line, huh? I think it would be hard to go against Luca, mm -hmm. but I I also played with Luca. It was his rookie year. Yeah. Um. So he was obviously really good his rookie year, but he wasn't doing what he's doing now. Mm -hmm. Um. So when I actually played with them, I guess I'd probably have to go JT, bro. Um. When I was with Boston, I mean, I was with, I was with Milwaukee. Uh, it's hard not to ever put Giannis into a conversation when we're talking about just being really good. Yeah. But skill set wise, probably JT, either him or D Book. When I was with Phoenix for a little mm, bit of time. Yeah, those are tough ones. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm struggling with this. Because I play with the most skilled players to ever play this game. Yeah. You got LD, <laughs> Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. Those are arguably one, three of the most skilled players to ever step foot on the court. Yeah. So to pick one is you're nitpicking at that point. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're all in the same realm. You know what I'm saying? Like... Mm -hmm. If you had to sit and just pick one, though, I would honestly say skill set. Golly, bro. What's your definition of skill set, though? That's what, I, that's what was going to be my question. Because like, is it all around, all around game or is your skill set the how you get buckets? See, that's, I feel like there's two different arguments. Yeah. Is it, it's who's got the deepest bag? Mm hmm And then overall, just everything skill set. So scoring, passing, rebounding, defense, yeah. all of those things involved. If we're saying skill, all right, I ask him, I answer him in both. If you think skill set is straight bag, Kyrie Irving. It's the best, most skilled player I ever played with. Mm -hmm. And Luca's right there mm -hmm. as far as just bag. Skill set all around, Kevin Durant. I like that. Because it's, he's something, like I said, it's something you can't teach. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that goes right into it. He has a lot of 
I mean, you're seven foot. Seven feet. Shooting right over people. That's hard to guard. Mm -hmm. So I think I would say Kevin Durant, if we're talking about all around, and then Kyrie, if we're talking just. I like that. Baja. I like that. Because, I mean, when KD wants to guard too, he'll guard. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think that's one thing that I, obviously you, you saw him at a, at a tough point when y'all beat him in game seven. But mm -hmm. one thing I've always respected about D-Book and even JT is on that other end, they'll sit down and guard. 100%. And compete. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what's so hard about that argument. It's like, what are you going to, what do you consider skill? Mm -hmm. You know, if we're talking about bags, I don't know if we've ever seen a player that has a bag deeper than Kyrie. Yeah. Period. Like, I've never seen him get ripped. I've, his finishing ability as a little guard is, there's, I don't know if maybe Same. you throw AI in there, but yeah, we haven't really seen it. Plus, he can shoot it. He can score at all three levels. He can still pass the ball. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to go against Kyrie, but I like that though. I like KD overall, and yeah, it's hard to go wrong with any all three of those guys. Hundred percent. All right, so this is the piggy the piggyback on this. This is something we've had a little debate about in the title league realm. Uh, better big three, in your opinion, Phoenix, KD edition. KD's team in Brooklyn, James, Kai, KD, or Book, Bill, KD? I mean, fuck it. Well, you talking about Steph, Clay. Yeah. Or, so, better, K, better, better big three. Steph, KD, Clay, Kai, James, KD. Book, Brad, KD. Better got KD. <laughs> Shit, he's been with some Russ James, <laughs> KD. <laughs> he's I mean, been on some teams, shit. bro. I still, I can't, I can't go away from that Brooklyn Big Three, bro. I just can't. Like you saw it, did that? <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> that that team when they are healthy. And that was when James was still like, mm -hmm. he was still like at playing as well as he was, like kind of MVP and yeah. all that kind of stuff. That team was, that yeah. big three was unreal, bro. Hey, listen, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I agree with you. That's a, oh, God. The only thing I would say, the amount of shooting. With that with the, Steph, yeah, Clay, yeah. and KD. I think that's the team, though. But that, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, the system. Cause then you have to throw Draymond in there too. He's yeah. the one setting all yeah, of those yeah, guys he's, up. He's like, getting he's making the engine tick. The now you talk about roll the ball out, let's go get it. Ain't nobody fucking with that. Come on, bro. BK team. They that's the best to, big three. They used to take turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who got the matchup? Oh, Oh, you, you got, got it? it? Oh, yeah. Right, go, go ahead. ahead. You think got it rolling? It. Think right, about it. Going. Your third best defender is probably on James. James. Oh, God. Come on. <laughs> Come on. What? Come on. What are we talking about right now? What kind of argument is this, bro? It's really sad that team broke up. It's 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 the the best thing that never happened, bro. It when it happened, you're like, oh, they're winning a the chip. Yeah, when that when that signing happened. And now, after afterwards, everybody's like, "Oh, but he freaking traded everything away for that. He did all this, did all that." You're an idiot I would if too. you don't take. Yes, you're an idiot if you don't take that. As long as you have just a few competent pieces yeah. around those guys, mm -hmm. you kidding me? It's, it's you're an idiot if you don't take that because at the end of the day, you're gonna sit back and be like, "What if?" Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't do that. You can't sit here and not not take that gamble. With all time, if you're grades. trying to win, especially in you and BK, you're trying to win one. Yeah, you're just trying to get one That's chip. It. So you you take that gamble, and I think it was a great gamble. Just just didn't work out. Injuries, Probably bro. Is. Life Injuries. happens, man. Life happens. Shout out to Prize Picks, our presenting partner, the 
daily fantasy sports game. At Prospects, you don't play against anybody. You only play against the stat projections. And it's very easy to play. It only takes less than 60 seconds to make my picks and submit my entries. AJ just told you how easy it is. All you have to do is pick between two to six players and pick more than or less than. Prospects has something for everybody, from the NBA to the NHL to even college basketball. My dog Rob Dillingham got me cashing out. With as little as four correct entries, you can make up to 100 times your money. So you can turn $10 into $1,000. You can turn $20 into $2,000. Prospects offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits straight into your account all season long. Listen, March is over, but national champions are made in April. Be a part of the action of prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. Download the app today. Use code RACE for your first deposit match up to $100. But um, I, have a further, I have another question for you. If you could predict the top six in the West right now at the end of the season, who are you picking? Minnesota, OKC. So you're saying Minnesota gets the one seed? I think I don't really, I can't really say which one's going to get the one. I think Minnesota down the stretch will. Okay. So I'll say Minnesota, OKC. Um, Golly, bro. It's getting tight, low key. But it's either top three is solidified. Yeah, Denver's going to be up there. there. Denver. And then what, Clippers are four? It's Denver, it's Denver, OKC, Minnesota. Clippers, uh, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're all well to eight. To they're eight. fighting. So I think the way the Mavs are playing, I think they'll squeak into that six seed. I think they will. You think they get six? Hmm. I think they'll get six. They're in six right now, so I think they'll hold on to that. Yep. Uh, I think it'll stay the same, bro. To be honest, I don't see the. I know people are talking about the Clippers aren't playing very well right now. I don't see them falling into the play-in. Um, so I think they'll stay up there. The only the Clippers play every other day for the rest of the year. <sighs> Which means all PG, Kawhi, James, yeah. they and got a Russ bump. aren't going to be. The Thunder got a tough schedule. If I, if I had to guess right now, I would say I could still I could see the Suns and the Mavs making it out of the plan though somehow, bro. Yeah. I could definitely see okay, that. Okay, so I I got Denver, Minnesota, OKC, Clippers, Mavs, Suns, Pelicans. Uh who would they play? It'd be like uh the Kings, Lakers, and Warriors yep. are eight, nine, and ten. Pelicans. Lakers gonna fuck around and get up there. The eight seven. You think Seven, so? Eight. Yeah. Somebody's going to... I, I can see... And I think Kings... Kings would be playing the Warriors. 9-10. That'd be a I think wild the, game. I think the Kings going to fall. That's a rivalry game. Yeah. I think the Kings will fall there. And then... Uh, shit. Lakers. Pelicans. Ooh. Rerun? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I haven't been. I haven't. I haven't watched the Pelicans in a while, so I don't really know. I just Zion's Zion, a monster. Zion has been. He's been balling. He's been but balling. Bi's been out for a while, though. Yeah, it's a good Western Conference uh, <laughs> playoff right there, brother. Great Western Conference playoff. Justin, we got to address some. Dejounte Murray shot forty-four times yesterday, bro. <laughs> what the hell was going on? And he got the dub. Let's go ahead and put that out there. DeJounte, you a, you nice, my boy. There had to become a point where he's like, damn, I am jacking, bro. But he got the dub. So what can you really say to him? I mean, you can say a lot. You can say, <laughs> you can say a lot to him. Um, he did play 47 minutes, which is impressive in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not like he was the only real player out there for the Hawks either. Mm. They still had friggin' Hunter. They had Bogey in there. Capella was playing. You know, other than that, it's kind of... Yes. <laughs> it's kind of sus, but... Yeah. Um, 44 times. That's a lot of shots, bro. 
Like, when do you get to the point where you're like, hey, bro, I just got to swing it. Like, I'm. Bro, even taking 30, bro, he took 14 more shots. 14 more, bro. He took. DeJounte Murray, he's been balling. He's been shooting the ball well. But he took 19 threes. That's a lot. of. How many he hit? Six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's a lot, bro. I that's mean, 44. Shots, for bro. one, 44 shots to get 44 points. That's That's a rough night. Yeah. It's a rough night. That's, yeah. That's, if you shoot 44 times, then you should be on the level of like 70, 60. Like, that's hard as fuck to do, bro. Yeah. To shoot 44 times is hard. That's hard. Like, you got to be tight. Your arm is exhausted. Yeah. Bro. Now, that also, you also have to, were the coaches telling him that he needs to get up all those shots? Or did he just make up in his mind after the first quarter? He was, I like, wonder you know, if he's like, sitting there like, I'm hot. <laughs> Maybe he started out hot. Yeah, that might have been it. He had a good first, second quarter. And so then it was like, all right, you know what? Got to stay hot. Shit, bro. 44. That's... Have we seen somebody shoot 44 times? I mean, here, here recently? I mean, Embiid had, what, 70 on like 30 shots? Bro, no one shot 40 plus times, bro. 44 times? No one shot 40 plus times. That's got to be the most we've seen in the last few years, bro. Has to be. And got the dub though over Boston. That's actually big time. And hit the game winner. He shot 63 shots. 63 shots Is that the that's the record? Yeah. So what's the most recent record? Like what's the most recent? It's gonna pop up DeJounte. Kobe Bryant, his last game, 50. Oh yeah. That is true. But he but he had 60. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, he has, he has 60. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is the most we've seen in, yes, in, in a the long recent time. years. Respect. Kobe has 60, though, bro. 60. That's a horrible night. And it was on his retirement night. Yeah, that's a horrible night. 44, that's bad. That's a bad. That's a bad night. But hey, he got the dub. Got so the fuck dub. It. Fuck what we talking about. Exactly. But hey, listen, J Jax. How do you feel about this 65 game rule? I feel like there's been a lot less injuries this year. Not saying like that's just all luck. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys playing, but like, do you think that has helped out a lot in your opinion? I think it, um, we've talked about it a little bit. The 65 rule really only, it only messes with the top 10 players in the league. Yeah. You know, when it comes to like being in the MVP race and all the awards and things like that. Yeah. Um, me personally, I just like to see good players playing. Mm -hmm. So especially like come playoff time, I want to see a loaded playoffs. Yes. You know, I don't want to see no injuries. Like either. regular season, yeah, I understand the money aspect and TV deals and all that kind of stuff, but the playoffs is when you want to see the best players playing. Mm -hmm. And I think this year we actually have seen a pretty good amount of injuries go down um, whether it's resting or people just taking care of their bodies or yeah. travel schedule whatever so I like seeing it this way as opposed to midway through the season you see so and so goes out with a season ending injury and you know you don't get to see him in the playoffs mm. and so I like I like from that standpoint if it is if you want to put on the 65 game rule I like that aspect for sure for sure I think it's been I think it's been good and bad as far as like, there has to be like a a gauge or like a, because you can't force someone to do something. No. You know what I'm saying? Like if they're hurt, they're hurt. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like there's really nothing you can do about it, but you can't diminish of the play they had before yeah. a freak injury. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I think that's a little part about it that I don't like. But at the same time, it's making guys go out there and play. Yeah. It's making guys go out there and compete at a high level because you want that extra bread. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, you're talking about millions of dollars. Dudes want that. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get to that bag. So I think that's one thing that has helped out a lot. And at the same time, you can just stay in rhythm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you had the freedom of just resting all the time, you're going to take it. Yeah. So yeah. guys aren't really taking, are, aren't taking that for granted anymore. I think that's helping out the game a lot. Yeah. But Jax, roll tide. I lost a bit. I had to say it. Dang. Tough. 
That's tough. Tough, tough, tough. <laughs> we have lost to the Alabama Crimson Tide in the March Madness NCAA tournament. Tough game. I'm going to be quite frank with it. I'm going to start off. I'm going to just give my two cents. We smoked it. Mm-hmm. We smoked that game. A lot of plays in between the game that you could say would have, could have, should have, could have, would have, all that. We missed some open ones. RJ had probably the worst night he's had. Maybe his whole career. Whole career. He had one bad night earlier this season, but. He hit a couple more shots. We probably win the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's this is a tough one because they didn't beat us. No, we lost it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That those are the hardest games to to get over. The games that you just lose, cool, but like it's 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 a tough one to get over. Yeah, it's a tough one to get over. I mean, we got to address it. I mean, the weather's three. <laughs> Terrible shot. Terrible shot. I mean, I remember I was watching. I, I just let out a what the fuck. <laughs> as soon as as I saw him get into it, I said, no way he's about to do this. <laughs> and it was seconds 15 the- seconds left on the shot clock. That's a huge play. I understand there's a lot that happened before that. We're up one. Up one. With what thirty some seconds left? No, no, it was. I remember vividly. We're up one a minute. I think it's a minute twelve or a minute two, might be a minute twelve, and we got a fifteen second shot clock. I'm like, yo, and then he comes down and fouls him softly because yeah. and one. I'm like, what are we doing, bro? Six point turnaround. That's Tough, bro. Yeah. That's a huge play. But listen, to his defense, I don't know if we're in that position without him. Mm-hmm. Because he played well mm-hmm. the whole tournament. Yeah. He played well the whole tournament. And this comes with the territory. Yeah. Being criticized comes with the territory. It did not come down to that one play. Mm-hmm. Was it a big play? Hell yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a big play. But it is what it is. We lost. It's a tough one. What's your, what's your thoughts on it? Man, I hate it for RJ. But you, that's just what happens in basketball. Yeah. You have bad shooting nights. Obviously, it sucks to have him in a game like that. Like you said, if he makes a couple more, it's a totally different game. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was just so many... And because I was listening to Coach Davis's post game, and he had made a he had made a statement basically saying that he's always said all year like there's a ton of little things that make the big things happen. Mm-hmm. And when I watched that game, it's like there was a play in particular where North Carolina scored, and Alabama got it out and oh. was immediately in a two on one and laid it up on the other end, mm-hmm. and. Like it's little things like that in and a that game like twice. that. There was another play. Mondo gets a layup, and they weren't even going that fast. They just boom, pass, pass three. Yeah, and Mondo was the one that ended up contesting the three. At that point, we were going up, I think five. Yeah, and that cut it to two, but cut it right back to two. And I'm like, those are killers. Those are the ones. Those I are mean, killers because then you opening the game up at that exactly point. because so, I mean. We were up eight at halftime, mm-hmm. and really, if you look back at the at that first half, they probably should have been up twelve to fifteen yeah. at halftime. Mm-hmm. But then again, you have to give credit to Alabama, bro. Like they really, they had one guard that it felt like every time we kind of made a run, he came in and hit a three. Mm-hmm. They had the little lefty guy with the, uh, I think his name's Estrada, hit the hook across the lane. Like he was making plays all night, and then at the end of the game, they Enough. gave it to Big Fella. Um, we didn't have an answer for a second. We didn't know what to do. I mean, he was be hitting the Tracy, and then he can get to the cup. His 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 when he drove and switched it from right to left oh, on the other that side. Was crazy! I was like, yeah, this he's 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 nice. 
he's been struggling this year. Struggling. Though. That's I was just telling somebody else. I watched Alabama early on in the season. And I think he like fouled out, uh, like didn't even have double digit points. Like, but everybody was talking about how good he was coming from what was it, North, North Dakota? Dakota State, bro. He had six points in the first round, and just had twenty four. That's the game. That's game. That's the game. That's it. That's tough. So it's just, it's, it's hard, bro. But I mean, at the same time, you got to give North Carolina credit too. Mm -hmm. Earning a number one seed mm -hmm. not is not easy. easy. Not easy. And going not 17 easy. and three in ACC play, mm -hmm. I don't care if you want to consider ACC down or not. Yeah. That's not easy. Because clearly it's not. Yeah. yeah. But hey, at the end of the day, been a good year. Yeah. Uh, it's not our standard. We definitely want to win a national championship, at least get to the final four. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we didn't get there, fell short. Um, but hopefully come back next year and hey, listen, it's going to be a totally different team. Totally different. Oh my God. Freshman. If you're RJ, do you come back? Hmm. Now that's a great argument and debate. Depends on how you're looking at it because I don't think RJ's stock, whatever that might be, could be any higher than what it is right now. Mm-hmm but I also don't know what his stock is. Mm -hmm. And for me, it would be all about, hey, look, can you come back to school and make way more bread? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if I'm RJ, I'm paying attention. I'm, I'm going through the workout stuff. For sure, going through the whole process. I'm going to go through the whole process. Mm -hmm. And if it looks like undrafted, if it looks like um, possibly two-way or something like that, I might come back. I might come back. But, hey, the, the money they dishing out in college right now. Come on now. The only thing I would say is like, and this is a real thing. Uh, I guess you couldn't say that about our team this year, but when I was done, my last year, I was done. Mm -hmm. Like I was ready yeah. to move forward. Yeah. So maybe that might be where he is to like just take the next step yeah. on his career. Like sometimes you can just be hanging on by a thread yeah, and just yeah. be like just tired. It's the same thing over, over and over, over again. again. Do you want to go? Do you want to play Virginia in a slow ass pace yeah. again next year? Maybe not. But at the same time. <laughs> They want to make it the same money. They're making way different money now. Yeah, money changes so, some decisions. I mean, if I'm not in the draft boards and you're happy, mm -hmm. why not? Might as well run it back. Why not run it back, see what happens. But he definitely make more money. Yeah. ACC player of the year, coming back. Returning. First team All-American. You getting the bag. Come on. You getting the you bag. You have to. You got to. You ain't no choice. You have to. Jay Jax, there was a report that came out that Kayla Clark got offered $5 million to play in the big three. Boy, are you taking it? <laughs> Come on, bro. You taking it? Five mil? Give me that money. Give me that money. Thank you. Please and thank you. And then Listen I will to WNBA season. <laughs> And hey, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. It would be hard, but I'll probably take the money too. <laughs> but also, it just wouldn't be like, I don't know. Would it be fun for her though? Yeah. I mean, it, it would go into a lot of it, it would be a hard decision because you also, it's like, like you said, they would miss a whole WNBA season. You miss a whole WNBA season. Are you coming to watch me actually play or are you coming to watch me hope that I fail? Yes. And that's the biggest thing that I would be like, just go play in the WNBA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That like, is true. Like, we want to see you play against the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And we think it'd be great. It's gonna be a great product anyway. People are still gonna come watch you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna get all the endorsements in the world. Exactly. So like just go embrace that. 
And like I said, but in the day, $5 million, $5 million. Eight games, shit. I get to the Baja. Three the, on issue, three. the issue is I think it is kind of a lose-lose situation for her, though. Mm-hmm. Because obviously the five mil, that's an unbelievable amount of money. But the issue is, like you said, the first time that a guy scores on her or oh, shoots over top of barking. her. I mean, it's like everybody is going to be like, oh, women shouldn't be playing with men. And mm-hmm. it's going to start that whole debate. And then if she's not doing the stuff offensively that we know she can do, mm-hmm. it's the same arguments. Yep. So yep. it's like, I, I probably, it would be tough because five mil, that's a basically, that's more than a whole career in the WNBA, basically. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So that's tough. But at the same time, with how competitive this she is, and I think she, just from seeing her in college, like she wants to be one of the best to ever play women's basketball. Go ahead and go to WNBA and start making so, your mark. Go ahead and make your, make your bread. Yeah. Make your bread. Jay Jackson, in, in your opinion, and watching the women's tournament, which has been very entertaining, very mm-hmm. fun to watch, who's the best player of the tournament so far? Overall, bro, I got to go Paige. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we just were talking about freaking Caitlin, but. Um, She's been consistent all mm-hmm. all tournament. Um, and they've been under the radar, bro. I think that's yeah. what I like about it. And she just does it in a way where she's just, she goes out there, does her job, and it's what she's supposed to do. She don't force nothing. She don't force anything. But it just naturally just flows. Yeah. yeah. And I, I agree. I, I vote Paige. I think she's playing at a high clip right now, efficient. Mm-hmm. Uh, just willing her team to a win, what, and that's like whatever it takes. Like she, she's a true team player. Like you don't really ever see her out there. Like yo, yo, yo. Like if it gets to me, it gets to me, and then exactly. I do the work after. Yep. And I think that's a beautiful way to play the play the game. And for her, all the injuries and stuff she's been through to come back and still dominate at this level. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah, it's, so it's it's been, cool to watch. It's been fun to watch. Oh shit. Forgot. We about to, we're going to start talking about the play of the week on here. <laughs> what Anthony Edwards did in the paint was insane. First of all, I commend the refs. I don't do this a lot. I commend the refs for not calling three seconds. But I appreciate y'all for not. Because that was a thing of beauty. And I just want to ask you this straight up. Are you fucking with the game? <laughs> are you playing around at this point? Or are you really just serious? Because mm-hmm. who who does that? He could have shot it two spins ago. I don't care what you say. He's has too much game and he's just trying stuff out he's there. He's just trying shit at this point. He pivoted five times, made the guy jump three times, mm-hmm. and didn't shoot it until his last pivot to the fade. I think the rest wanted to see if he was gonna make it. I mean, then he cashed out. They were watching his fans at that moment. Shit was tough. Because he was in there for about five seconds. Super tough. <laughs> Come on. That was, yeah, that was that was one of the craziest, one of the nicest plays yeah. I've seen in a yeah. while. Answer issue. Answer issue. Jay Jax, let's talk about football free agency. <laughs> As we all know, Jay, Va- Jay Jax is a Cowboys fan. Whoa, whoa, Texans. Shout out CJ Stroud. <laughs> As we all know, Jay Jax is a Cowboys fan. They ain't done shit. They act like they won the bowl last year. They stink. Y'all poopy. I mean, what? What are y'all thinking? Y'all lost hella guys, and y'all have not picked up anybody. What's going on, Bat? What's going on, Jax? I wish I could give you an answer, bro. <laughs> it's a disappointing summer. Yeah, me... I don't know, bro. Y'all got that long snapper, though. Chill out. What's <laughs> up <laughs> with this guy, man? <laughs> we got Kendricks, middle yeah. linebacker. Yeah, that was Come a big on. pickup. Huge pickup. That was a big pickup. But we also lost two off of our offense. Y'all had a line. nigga retire. We did. Yeah. He had to. A lot of neck head injuries. Tough pauls. <laughs> but yeah, tough. It's, it's, bro, I don't know, honestly. I, I really don't. I mean, you can't sign somebody to a minimum, mm-hmm. you know? Nothing. There's still a lot of guys out there, though. 
still a lot of guys out there. You can make of, a play, man. Yeah, for sure. Come on. You got the Bears. Shout uh, out T Hall, man. Hey, they got a chance to be nice. Yeah, chance, bro. Because you get Caleb Williams. Yep. You just got Keenan Allen for nothing. They gave him up for nothing. Nothing. And De- then DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift. They add some pieces defensively. Then you go. You then you got the ninth pick. I'm on, trading that. You trading it? I'm trading it. I'm getting somebody else. Somebody else defensively. Getting two more first rounds. Hey, listen, bro. I don't know what you do. I'm trading the ninth pick. I got my quarterback. Let's go get some guys who are ready to win. So you think you go defensive or you think you go with like a receiver? They already got DJ and Keenan. But Keenan's older though. Come on, bro. You can get somebody for cheap. That is true. You can skill players. Come on, you can get a little skill player for cheap. I think, hey, listen, that's what I would do. But last but not least, talk about the commanders. We said make no move. one. <laughs> <laughs> we making moves, man. We made we got a lot of it. We got Austin Eckler. Touchdown machine. <laughs> Chill out, bro. Play the clip. He got hawked down one time. <laughs> We got to work on his speed this summer, but we'll be all right. We'll be all right. He is a fantasy legend. I will say that. Yeah, for sure. Hey, listen, all I know, I don't know if we go Jalen Daniels or Drake May. I'm happy with either or. Tell you that right now. Happy with either or. Um, Of course, I'll go with my Carolina guy. Got to go with Drizzy. Yeah, we'll see what happens. JJ McCarthy. But yeah, man. Hey, listen, Jax, it's been one hell of a ride. We appreciate you coming on. It's another episode of Run Your Race. Um, once again, Proud Dad brand on the way. Merch is on the way. Something I'm very passionate about. Something that I'm very excited about. And it is going to be something that I'm going to continue putting out new stuff. Uh, website is coming up soon. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But appreciate you wearing the shirt, taking the shirt or whatever. But uh, Proud Dad. Peace.